All right, this is the crit for button down. Let's dive in, we've got a lot to go over. So uh, the first thing is we're gonna have this big Notion document. I'm not gonna read through it in real time in this video, that would be very boring, but I do wanna talk about the three themes or the three areas where I think button down has the most room for improvement. So the first is talking about layout, have lots of notes on this further down. The big win here is just poking around, looking at every page, you'll notice right away, everything is full width. I gotta imagine there's a reason or philosophy behind this, but I think a very quick, clear win is to just add a max width to every page in button down. Now, one of the things that that's gonna help do is make this interface a lot easier to scan. Uh, you're gonna have a lot less of this sort of dead space here, dead space here, but it's also gonna make these really long strings easier to read. This is a very, very long line. People have to spend a lot of time like making sure that they're tracking these lines. And then in certain cases, like in the subscribers table, where you have some information over here and some information over here, having those things closer together like that makes this list easier to scan. So that's the first thing on layout. I have a bunch of other notes about layout down below, but I think that's maybe the, the quickest win. The second thing I wanna talk about is hierarchy. So I think there's opportunities to improve the hierarchy of the app overall. There's uh, some, some observations about button styles, about typographic styles, and section containers, like backgrounds and borders. But the one thing I wanted to point out in this video was talking about sort of the hierarchy of app controls. This is kind of a little bit navigation, but also just like the hierarchy of jobs to be done. Like why do people show up to button down in the first place? What are they trying to accomplish? And so one of the interesting things that I noticed about the app is that there's two persistent elements that appear on every page, right? And it's the search bar and this global drop down for navigation. Everywhere I go, search and navigation. Now navigation makes sense, right? You gotta get to places. But the interesting element for me was search. I am maybe not your target customer. Or I don't understand some of the workflows here, but I'm a writer. I publish a newsletter. I write blog posts. So I felt like I'm kind of here and I was wondering why is search so important? Why is it commanding this uh, huge space in the navigation bar? Are people really using search more often than they are navigating to view their subscribers or navigating to view their drafts or scheduled emails. The position, the size, the placement, all this stuff is implying to users that this thing, this search input is more important than everything here. And I'm not sure that's true. So from a hierarchy point of view, is there a way we can lift some of these core jobs out into that global navigation so that it's easier to get to the things that I care about and get to the you know, surfaces where I can get my work done. Okay, that's hierarchy. Let's talk about navigation. So navigation is happening here in this dropdown. And I think it's interesting that all of the navigation is here. It makes it a little bit tedious to get around, to be honest. Like any time you wanna switch, you gotta click twice. There's no way to just jump right to the stuff I care about the most. It's always hidden, it's a little bit low contrast, maybe a little bit hard to find. So navigation right off the bat feels a little bit clunky to use, but even within this dropdown, just some general observations, there's some weird grouping and sectioning of this area. So writing makes sense. We have uh, the composer, we can view scheduled emails and drafts, but then down here is my archives, which are my sent emails. So it's weird that that wouldn't also appear under writing. You have management, which is about my subscribers, my tags, but then embedding and sharing. Uh, I'm not sure what that has to do with like my subscribers or even tags. I felt like this might make sense as like a subscribers heading and I might just change, have this and tags. Then archives could come out. Anyways, I'll, I'll get into all this later. The next big section is stuff related to me, my account. So I have my account and billing, maybe documentation, ask for help switch newsletter and log out are also account things, but they're split up into these two sections. And then the last big section of, of stuff is newsletter specific navigation. So getting to my newsletter preferences, the design, programming, subscribing, paid subscriptions or memberships, and then switching my active newsletter. So those are kind of the four areas and I'm not sure that they're correctly placed in the dropdown today. One other thing I wanted to mention was uh, button down 
lets you add a second newsletter, presumably many newsletters. So you can switch between your active newsletter like this. But what I found interesting was this active newsletter isn't shown anywhere. So once you have an active newsletter, you don't really know which one you selected. You keep having to like go back here, but then even in this dropdown, I don't know which one's selected. So then you pick one and it switches you to it. So now the only way to know that I'm in this newsletter is to literally go to my account settings every time. Now, the reason this is important is imagine you're drafting an email. Imagine I type, you know, a subject and some interesting stuff and I'm about to hit send. I'm like, uh, which newsletter am I sending this to, right? Like this, this basically implies that you have memorized how many subscribers you have at all time for all of your newsletters. Wouldn't it just be easier if your newsletter was like part of the navigation or part of this like global context, right? Is search more important than knowing the newsletter that's currently active? So that's layout, hierarchy, navigation, and then a lot more here to go through. Now let's jump over to this thing to notice is this note Notes page over here on the left, I have taken screenshots of hopefully most pages in the product and put it through the ringer and I left a bunch of comments. The comments here will mostly map to the notes in this Notion document, but there might not be 100%, you know, parity. So take a look through these and it'll be a little bit easier to, to see the comment on top of the UI to understand what I'm talking about. Okay, let's talk about the redesign itself. This is, uh, this was tricky for me, honestly. So you asked me to take a look at the writing screen, this composer, or the subscribers list to see how we could improve it. I didn't do either of those things. <laughs> so we'll see. I hope this is useful. Um, I thought the more interesting area that we could explore is navigation overall. How do we help people understand where they are in button down, what the jobs to be done are, what, what button down thinks is most useful for people to be spending their time on? So there's a couple things to point out really quickly here before we get back into Figma and the prototype. The first is that when you go straight to button down and you're signed in, you land directly on the composer. We'll talk about that decision in a second. And then of course, uh, having all of the navigation wrapped behind this dropdown. Uh, I prototyped just a very light click through. Let's jump into that. Here is your app today. I'm gonna click through and what you'll see is gonna be pretty jarring. Um, I ignore all of the body content and we're just gonna be looking only at the top, I don't know, one eighth of the page. So here we go. This is a way that you could redesign the button down navigation. And I'll walk you through my thought process here. When I looked at this drop down, again, as I called it earlier, there's some thematic grouping of jobs to be done. There's account management, newsletter management, writing, and then looking at my subscribers. So if we go back to our prototype, you can kind of see how that grouping plays out here. I have my account stuff, and within that is account settings, billing, support, and docs, and the ability to log out. I have newsletter stuff, so being pulling out the, the name of my currently active newsletter. Behind that, I have access to the quick newsletter switcher, prompt to add a new newsletter, or for my currently active newsletter, I can get to things like settings, sharing and embedding, design, managing my paid subscriptions, and getting to developer settings. Does that make sense? Now in the middle, I just made an opinionated call. What are the two jobs that I think people might spend their most time in and button down? I could be wrong on these. So this is just a gut call. But the two were writing, managing the emails themselves. And then the second thing was looking at my subscribers and understanding how that's growing and changing over time. Now within that, we have sub navigation. One thing that I really liked about this style of sub navigation is that it flows from left to right through time. So as I'm writing, I come up with some drafts. I have some ideas that I want to send to the world. I schedule those and then they're sent. And so my, my emails move left to right over time. And you know, as you introduce counts here, maybe there's like three scheduled and 12 sent or two drafted. The counts there help me understand across the entire timeline of an email's life cycle, like where is my stuff, right? Within subscribers, I'm not exactly sure if these are the right calls either, but certainly you click subscribers, I would expect to see a table of all my subscribers. I put tag management here. Uh, I renamed subscribing, I believe is what it's called. Yeah, subscribing, where you can like create rules for how you vet subscriptions or send confirmation emails or send uh, messages to new subscribers. 
called that rules. I don't know if that's the right term. And then the last thing is your paid subscriptions. I called it memberships, just to trim a word and hopefully it makes sense. Uh, so that's that. Uh, I trimmed down search. I mean, this could technically be an inline input here and is would be fine. Or you can just click it and it expands and focuses at the same time. Now the last thing, of course, to notice here is you gotta come to button down to write some emails. So have a big primary button globally available to create a new email. Now this is a pretty big divergence from what I've pointed out earlier in your app, which is that when you go straight to button down, you land on the email composer. Maybe this is the right call and is incompatible with what I've prototyped here. But my thinking was when I land in button down, it might actually be more useful to know what my current work in progress is and sort of pick up on that work in progress to finish the things I've started. If that's not how your users use this, then you can ignore this. For me, I have like 30 drafts going of blog posts and things I want to put out into the world at any given time. And I just want to come in, like pick up on those ideas as I have new things to, to add to them or, or if I'm ready to set, actually send them out. So that means landing on button down directly would take me here and going to create a new email is a second click. Now, if you do that, you don't need, you can land in a page where you don't need all this extra global navigation. I ran out of time to really think through what the email composer navigation could look like. So just as a dumb example, you can imagine clicking new email and you get taken to some kind of page with a more focused composition experience. Maybe you don't even need this page title, but just a back arrow or a home icon or something like that. And then I can review and send as sort of like a primary action up in this, this global navigation bar. And then everything down here would be left for composing and previewing and scheduling and all that kind of stuff. So that is uh, my proposal. And I know this is probably not where you thought I'd take it or maybe it's not even useful at all. But I hope that talking through my thought process for how I think about the jobs to be done, the sort of grouping of information makes sense. And at the very least might end up resulting in some changes to this dropdown over in the production app. So I hope it's useful. Uh, I hope this Notion document is useful and I hope this video walkthrough uh, was useful in some way as well. So thanks and I'll talk to you later.